Good morning. Hopefully uh, things are working today better than yesterday. My mic is actually up and running. Um, although for some reason my audio monitor is not working, so I can't hear the music, which is unfortunate. Because uh, I really need that in my ear to maintain sanity and also watch for uh, followers. So that's a fun way to start the stream. Um, I'll have to investigate that, but maybe after I'm done with uh, the recording the stream here. Okay, let's switch over to my display. And good morning to um, Mod Prog and Just a Bubble. Well, it's my morning. So I hope you have a nice my morning. Um, let's see, here's where we left off. I restarted... Um, um, I restarted um, um, Chrome. That's what's called Chrome uh, to, to update it. And now my settings are a little bit off. I think this window is a little too wide. I created a little program that prints out 100 equal signs so I can get it lined up just right. OK, we'll put it right there. Um, it'd be great if I could just see the size here, but I can't because I can't. It only shows up when you're resizing it in the title bar, but you can't resize it and have the title bar down because by the time you get down there it makes the title bar go away so oh wait i can do it this way there we go okay 99 100 perfect okay i'll have to remember that for the future so where did we leave off um we now have a game which will allow different uh, mobs to have different turns um, so that things aren't locked into one turn for mob and then one turn for the player and then vice versa. Um, it's, you, you can actually have multiple, depending on your initiative, you can have multiple turns. There comes a rat. See, so I, I don't know if you noticed, but the rat moved twice when I moved once. Of course, they're easy to dispatch even with basic equipment. So it is moving a little slow. And I'm not sure if that's because I hit shift four and it's doing magic. Oh, magic missile. I was thinking it was a uh, um, magic mapping. I read the wrong thing. Okay. So anyway, that's where we left off. Uh, we just finished up um, making rats so they don't kill each other <clears throat> uh, due to the faction system we added. So the next thing to do um, is to respond to more distant entities. So that's what we're going to dig into right now. I think we're clean. Looks like we just pushed over here. Get status shows everything clean. So that's good. You make my uh, pop out chat a little bit bigger so I can see what's going on there. And let's dig in. Um, okay, so responding. Yeah, okay, I'm just checking my mic levels again. <laughs> I'm getting paranoid. Responding to those next to you is a great first step and actually helps with processing time since adjacent enemies are processed without a costly search of the entire view shed. But if there isn't an adjacent enemy, the AI needs to look for a more distant one. So if one is spotted that needs a reaction, we need some components to indicate intent. So we have wants to approach and wants to flee. So we already have that, right? Where the carnivores want to chase after the herbivores and, and the herbivores want to run away from the carnivores. Um, so this is probably going to replace that code. Let's take a quick look at the AI, the monster AI system here. So what is this doing? For every entity that has a view shed it is a monster. And monster is defined by the fact that it's, oh, it's got a monster tag on it. Okay. Uh, it's got a position and it has a turn. Then we're going to do this. If the distance is less than wants to melee is what happens. And if we're, if we can see the player, okay. Then we'll try to approach the player. I think that's what this is doing. Yeah, 
Um, I'm trying to remember how the um, how we differentiate between herbivores and carnivores in what other AI system? A animal AI system? Yeah, was that it? Yes, this was it. Okay, so we have herbivores running away a lot and carnivores uh, chasing after herbivores. So I think I think we're just going to change all of that up wants to, into a wants to approach and wants to flee. But let's let's see how this goes. Components. So we have two components. We have pub struct wants to flee. Which is a vec of u size. And then we have wants to approach. Which is just an I32. Maybe that's an index. Yeah, it's an index into the location that they want to approach. And then wants to flee. I don't know what that's an index for. Let's find out. These are intended to indicate what the AI would like to do, either approach a tile, right? That's that, or flee from a list of enemy tiles. Oh, then why aren't these I32s also? We'll make another new system, AI Visible AI System RS, and add it to Mob and Pub Use in AI Mod RS. Okay, we got first, before we do that, we got to add these two to our com registered components. So we'll put those here. Um, wants to approach and wants to flee. We'll then sort these. There they are. And then we'll go to the save load system because we have to add them there. Wants. Okay, wants to approach and wants to flee. And we need to do that. Oops. We need that do that here as well. Okay. So this should all check. Oh, we, we need to add. Oh, yeah. We're going to add a um, visible AI system. That's what we're doing next. Okay. Source AI. Visible AI system. And this is going to be it. Um, so let's see what this is doing. to approach. Right. So that's all of those. And pubstruct vis visible AI. And we're going to create a type here. And it's going to include read storage. And then faction and position and then read expect for the map. So faction and position. Uh, and then we have write storage for wants to approach and wants to flee. We have the entities. Uh, a read expect for the entity and a read storage um, for the view shed. Okay, E N T I T Y and view shed. Okay. Okay, first what we do is destructure everything. Entities. Um, it's probably player 
player is my guess, and then view sheds. Let's see what it is. It is, okay, data. And for, let's go down the line. For entity, it has a turn, has a faction, a position, and a view shed. So this means any factionless mob is not gonna be included here. Dot join. Right? Yep. Okay, if the entity is not the player, then we're gonna do all of this stuff. We grab the index of our current position. We're gonna set up the reactions. I'm gonna see if Russ can infer that type. If not, we can always go back and fix that for visible tile and view shed. Okay, so this is the the entity that we're talking about, their view shed. So what can they see? There we go. If my IDX is not equal to IDX, then we're going to evaluate. Okay, and that's that. Oh, so this is very similar to the code we did yesterday, where we grab a list of everything we can see and then determine what to do based on what we see. And yesterday we just considered the tiles that were the eight tiles around us. And now we're just considering the tiles in our view shed. So I'm now questioning why we need both ways. Epic blog says, you know, it's serious when lifetimes are explicitly added. Yeah, I think, I think that's just part of the way specs works. Um, and you know, in my rust code that I haven't been streaming, um, I've been having to add lifetimes here and there, and I still don't understand when I need it and when I don't, and I just follow what the compiler tells me to do. So <laughs> I'm still learning. And I think these are requiring lifetimes because these get stored in the um, um, in the system data, right? That's part that's part of the world that's being passed in here. So they have a lifetime that you, they, uh, I guess Russ needs to keep track of as we extract data and read data and write data. Reaction dot zero. That's I thirty two. Otherwise, unable to insert. Um, oh, and then done. It's true. If it's flee, then flee push. Uh, reaction zero. Otherwise, do nothing. Um, what's the other one? Oh, the other one is ignore, right? Reaction attack, reaction flee, and reaction ignore was the third one. Um, I guess maybe we're, we're doing it this way in case we add more reactions. Uh, if we're not done, which means we haven't chosen something to do, flee is empty. We're not done, which we haven't attacked, but we want to flee from something, then we will do this want flee. Want flee, insert. Wants to flee. To insert, I'm guessing. And then this closes this whole function out, but now we have this evaluate function that we're going to add. 
So hopefully this is where uh, Rust can infer the type based on what we're passing to it here. For other entity in map. And then this create, create up Ross thing. Action, reaction. I don't know why we don't just pull that in um, and then create raws, raws, lock, oops, unwrap. Like that. Okay. Um, and then we have to put it in um, the AI mod.rs. Not rs here, right? There we go. Like that, okay. Remember that this won't run at all if we're already dealing with an adjacent enemy, so there's no need to worry about assigning melee. It also doesn't do anything. It triggers intent for other systems and services. So we don't have to worry about ending the turn. It simply scans every visible tile, and evaluates the available reactions to the tile's content. If it sees something it would like to attack, it, set, it sets a want to approach component. If it sees things from which it should flee, it populates wants to flee structure. You want to add this to run systems in main. Also, after the adjacency check. Okay. So here's the adjacency check. So we can just change this to visible. Visible and visible. All right, so let's see if this compiles. Nope, what did I typo? I missed a closing brace there. Still not good. Not semantically valid as a function parameter. Oh. This should be in an impl block here. <laughs> what did I do? Impl take a visible AI to gay for system, was it? Epic block says, I always group the mods at the top of the file and then declare the use re-exports at a separate block below. But I just realized watching your code that I should be grouping it differently. Um, it feels to me like it's just a matter of um, prefer uh, personal preference. I mean, let's take a look at it real quick. Um, so, oh, in a second, as soon as I get this thing to compile, let's shift that over, and then, yeah, evaluate is just a separate function. It's not part of the system, so we don't have to do that. Um... Oh, positions. There we go. What else? I think that's it. Is that it? No, that isn't it. Oh, type system data. Equals visible data to K. Visible t underscore tiles. There we go. 
Okay. Well, let's take a... Epic says, yeah, it looks better the way you do it. Um, okay, well, let's take a quick look at it. So putting the mods at the top. Um, and then uses at the bottom. Right, like this. Yeah, I don't know. I mean, I, I keep them together because th that way we can see, you know, where, where the mods coming from and, and exactly what we're using from it. Um, I think it's personal preference. But if you like my style better, then I, that just means I'm awesome. We'll go with that. All right. We will go with the original original version. Okay, so this should cargo run, but it's not going to do anything, right? So even if we tried it out, we're not going to see anything, but we can at least make sure that we can generate the WASM, although I, I don't see any reason why we, would, we, would, we wouldn't be able to. That was hard to say for some reason. Okay, so it generate. Yeah, it would have blown up by now. Okay, so fleeing. Oh wait, I skipped over approach. So we're gonna do an approach AI as well. So this is the visible. So now that we're flagging a desire to approach a tile for whatever reason, currently it's because the occupant deserves a whacking, we can write a very simple system to handle this. Make a new file, approach AI, and we're gonna do this, okay? So this is coming out with the wants to approach stuff, right? And then I guess we're going to be inserting entity moved if we decide to move. Struct approach AI and type approach data. We have a write storage. If it's my turn. Write storage if wants to approach and position. We have a right expect for a map. And then two more right storages for viewshed. I'm not sure what the, the reason for the ordering here is. And then entities. All of the entities in the system. Okay. So impl take a system take a approach AI. Like that. So this mutt self self. Wow. Sheds and he moved and N to T's. Okay, so before we type in too much, I want to make sure I understand what's going on. We're going to look at every entity that has a position, a desired approach, which would have been inserted by the, uh, the system we just finished writing. It has to have a view shed and it has to have its turn. It's going to insert this turn done. It's going to insert the entity into the turn done vector. It's going to do an A star search for 
the location we're trying to get to, the approach index divided by map width, approach index mod map width, so that's the XY. Um, if we found a path to the thing we want to approach and it's more than one step away, and we're going to set map block to false for the for the um, the index that we're on, and we're going to insert an entity moved for the trigger system to to trigger, uh, and then we're going to. Oh, here's where we set the new location. Path steps one. That's interesting. Not path steps zero. I guess path step zero might be the, the current location anyway. So path steps one is the next location. I wish I understood how, better how the A star search worked. I mean, I know how A star search work in general. I mean, what data does it return? So I'm guessing path, path dot steps of zero is the location we started at. Path steps path dot steps of one is the next step to take towards that, towards the goal location. Um, and then we set the view shed dirty for um, this particular object, entity, sorry. And then we clear the want approach. So we're gonna do it for every entity that has a want approach. Okay, I think I understand what's going on. That's interesting put it there okay uh, I don't know what cargo formats gonna do but I just moved it back one done push entity path is okay and then X Y I D X I32, and then we pass in a map like that. I don't know why it has to be mutatable. Why do they have to mutate the map as they're doing a, a star search? That's confusing to me. Uh, if path success and path steps len is greater than one, so we're not in it, talking about an adjacent tile, right? Let mod IDX map. X pause Y. I'm no longer blocking the tile. And Y is going to be divided by width. be nice to have a, a sort of a general function which did all of this work for us so we wouldn't have to remember to do this entity moved every time we moved an entity because we have to remember to unblock the current tile move insert the move for the trigger system and then in, uh, set the next tile to block It'd also be nice to assert that the map here's assert, you know, map blocked, right? So we're not breaking anything. Mod product says I had a function with four lifetimes once. Turned out one was enough. <laughs> oh, okay. Yeah, I I I still haven't quite gotten the hang of of how all the lifetimes work, and I'm I'm working on a, another project where I still have to figure out why my lifetimes are not behaving right because I think I'm saving the data and having the, the data all live as long as it needs to live but I'm, I keep getting it wrong and and differences between um, putting the lifetime here 
versus up in the impul. I still haven't worked out those things yet, so I'm, I'm learning, but it's, it's taking me a little while. So now that we've processed all of the wants approach, we clear that array. Um, this is interesting. We're going to remove the turn from this entity. Any entity that wants an approach is going to have its turn removed, even if it doesn't need to do something, right? If, if it turns out that we found a sick, we did not find a successful path and we're going to ignore this, but the entity will lose its turn. Okay, so we just did a turns remove. If the path was a success, I found a successful path, but the thing is right next to it, then we're gonna also lose our turn. Hmm. Well, let's see how this plays out. Mod product says, yeah, feel free to ask on toggle bits discord. It's what I always do when I'm stuck. Uh, me too, actually, a couple of days ago, I was stuck on a problem with uh, mutability and lifetimes and I posted a little um, rust snippet on paste.rs and I asked the um, and I forget who, who responded but they, they they put the right mutes in the right places and suddenly everything worked so it was great I was I was very uh, very grateful for all of that um, so okay so we're gonna add It removes my turn when done, removes all approach requests, add it to run systems after the distant AI handler. Okay. Uh, distant. Where's the distant AI handler? There is no distant AI handler. There's a visible AI handler. I think that's what they meant. Right, because visible AI is the thing that checks to see what's visible and, and it inserts the intents. So I think that's they, they mean to add it after this. So that's what I'm going to do. We'll call this adjacent. Oh, and I'll approach. I was looking at the wrong word. Oh, and then we have to add it to the mod, right? Uh, pub. Um, approach AI system and then use so epic the one thing that's that's um, difficult with this is it's harder to sort I can't just pipe it into the sort program so if I want to have all these things sorted I have to do it manually and this is out of order too okay uh, sorting it doesn't is not a requirement it's just a thing that I do okay I forgot that what else are we missing approach AI doesn't exist because I messed up and now we're down to this error here WIDTH that's the only one left and it checks good um, this might actually do something now because it's it's now switching up on each of the um, as we play epic says as long as you keep them in order in insertion it's not a big maintenance burden this is true okay so I, I guess we could run this but it's not gonna it's not gonna really I'm not gonna see any differences here right we're not gonna we're not gonna notice things approaching and fleeing any differently to the way they were doing it before so yeah let's add the flee thing and then we can uh, we'll um, checkpoint that by uh, committing those changes so let's add oh i guess we're, we're going to add a uh, flee thing here hmm. grab three lines flee I know I'm getting ahead of myself here, but that's okay. Flee. 
uh, we'll go into the mod for AI and add a flea. And you see here, I'm I'm being inconsistent. I'm not si I'm not putting all of the the AI systems here. I should I should be doing that. Oops. Star. Equip. System. I think it's called. We'll find out. Oh, turn status. I do need to do that because that's a. Uh, um, that's got a bunch of routines in it. So that has to stay like that. Um, so now we'll create a flea AI system. And we'll find out if I made a mistake on the mod changes there in a second. There we go. So this is going to be almost identical to the approach, except it's going to look for flea. So why don't we just do that? And instead of wants to approach, we want wants to flee. Right? Flee. Flee. This will be wants flee. Oh, just want flee. Okay. And this will be um, just flee. Yep. Oh no, this is slightly different, isn't it? Look at this. This is doing a Dijkstra a map instead of a uh, a star search. Okay. Everything else should be the same though. So turn done push, and now we're not generating a path. Something's indented odd here, isn't it? Yeah, I think this is indented one over too many. Okay, so I'm going to grab that line. Oh, maybe that's why. Okay, and then map, populate, blocked. And now our flea map. I think this is the same, though, right? Almost. Okay, well, we'll get there. I'm getting distracted. Flea map. It's RLTK. Dijkstra map new. Uh, flea. Oh, this is why it's different. Because it takes a flea index. So it's a list of things we're trying to flee from. Diablo says, cats are not Rust compliant. They have nine lifetimes. Yeah, we should actually uh, maybe add cats to the game, right? <clears throat> um, I don't think there's a limit to how many lifetimes you can have. You just have to use them somewhere, right? Each one of these can have a lifetime, right? I have A, 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 but I could put A, B, C, D, E, F, G, Um, let's see. So we have the flea target. Now we're going to just check if let sum flea target is flea target. Okay, so we can combine these these two lines here. Don't have to be separate. Um, so then we're going to check to see if the map, the, the flea target tile is yeah, struck with nine fields can have nine lifetimes. Yeah, um, but it, 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 what <laughs> I'm trying to think of why I'm trying to think of a situation where that would be useful to have. How is that different to having no lifetimes for any um, 
I don't know. I don't know Rust well enough to know if that would be a no-op in terms of lifetime specification. Um, hmm. Okay, so map blocked of my IDX is false. Map blocked. Oh, I left that assert in there, didn't I? I didn't mean to. <laughs> um, of the flea target as U size is true. We have the viewshed dirty. Right? And then we set the position. Oops. Position X and position Y is going to be flea target, right? And then we have the entity moved. We don't need that. Every blog says, now I'm randomly curious. I wonder what project has the most number of non-gimmick lifetimes. I wouldn't even know how to Google that. I think you'd have to write a little Rust parser and parse it out. Tomorrow. We'll do that in tomorrow's stream. Just kidding. Okay, so then want approach changes to want flee, and then we remove turns for every everything that had a uh, considered term. Mod product says, by default, all references have the same lifetime. Oh, okay. Yeah, that makes sense. So adding nine would be something fundamentally different from no lifetimes. Um... Unless, right, unless the struct has a reference, in which case you, you need a lifetime for every reference. Um, even if they're all the same. Okay, so we, I already did that part. Um, but now we're going to add our default for flee from townsfolk. For added effect, let's make townsfolk run away from potentially hostile enemies. The default action is flee. We ignore the player and other town folk we ignore as well. Okay, so if the rats tried to attack the townsfolk now, they would run away. That's interesting. Okay, so let's see if this checks. Um, oh, I forgot uh, some E on that one. What else? Yeah, and now I can't find anything. Okay, I just broke everything by leaving off one semicolon. Two semicolons. Three semicolons. I think it was called Quip System. Yeah, it was. Okay. Okay, let's check again. As I32. How did I leave that off? Um, oh, this should be my IDX. That's something I messed up there when I did all the copy paste. And I hit F1 again. Yeah, my IDX. Good, 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 good. Mount Prox says I had one struct that contained both the parsed and unparsed data. These had different lifetimes because after parsing, the unparsed data is not needed anymore. It wasn't a good design in general, but two lifetimes are needed. Yeah, so. Right, so you, if you read up like a file in and you're going through the and parsing out all the, the data from it and you're building up like, let's say, an abstract syntax tree from it. After you're done doing that, you have the AST, you no longer need the original file unless, unless you can like double things up by, like say there's a string that you want to save in your AST. You could refer to the original data and say, here's where my string is in the original data. It starts here and ends here. So then you would need to make sure that the original data stick us around. <laughs> well, that's that's also a terrible design. So so ignore everything I just said. Um, what did we do wrong here? There's no flea AI in flea AI system. Oh, because I, I didn't change the name here. Oops. Flea, flea. Flee and flee. Any more approaches? No. Okay.
Oh, this shouldn't be as I-32. This should be as you size. There we go. Okay, that checks, but it has two warnings. Am I not using my turn? No, I am. And map, entity moved. I'm using that. All right. We're going to have to... Um, Oh, it doesn't have to be mutable. I must have read this. Maybe I read this as my IDX as mod IDX. Okay, source AI flee. There we go. All right, so let's build this, and we can commit this once we have this working. And I just want to see if the townsfolk are going to run away from rats. They should at this point, right? I'm having a weird problem with this audio. When it every so often the, the song that's playing, I don't know if you, anybody can hear music in the background, but there's music running in the background. I can't hear, but every so often when it changes tracks, I I get like a half a second of audio. Um, begin your game. So I should be able to find. Oh, let's let's read this uh, scroll of of magic mapping here. Make it easier to find the rats. No rats there. So once I find the rats, I should be able to draw them out of the um, the house that they're in, and then see if they'll chase after the townsfolk, or the townsfolk will run away from them. This is kind of slow. I'm not getting the same kind of speed I was getting la uh, um, the first time I was um, playing before we added this whole initiative system in. Can't find any rats. I'll check this one real quick. Oh, now I'm stuck. There we go. There are the rats. So if we can draw some rats out. They're attacking. I don't know if the townsfolk are fleeing. But the rats are definitely attacking the townsfolk. But maybe this is too close quarters for the um, uh, for the uh, the townsfolk to run away from them. Oh no, I didn't. I didn't add the uh, the line for them to flee. Okay. Uh, so in our townsfolk, we have default ignore, but we're going to change it to default flee, and then whoops. Player, ignore, and townsfolk, ignore, like that. Yep, okay, so let's try one more time. Uh, Diablo says you can hear the you know, music, that's good because... Um, and be kind of it's it's kind of eerily quiet right now in my ears i'm used to having music while i'm doing coding and reading uh, oh i keep forgetting this too let's do that oh that's right we're also starting with the confusion scroll now i should change it to the magic mapping scroll so i don't have to keep picking one up no rats let me know if the music's too loud because I can't tell right now. No rats there. Devka J, hi, how are you? I like your little rustations you put there. Little crab crab emotes. Oh, they're the rats. Okay, let's see if we can pull some out. Let's see if the townsfolk run away from them. I guess they are. It would be nice if they actually said, a rat running away, or something like that. Oh, no, a rat. But they are definitely staying clear of the rats, right? They're not randomly going towards the rats. Let me, if I can draw a rat towards me. Nope. There we go. Yeah. 
they're definitely trying to stay away. That's cool. Alright, so that's working. So let's check all this in. Get, commit, add, um, approach, and flee AI systems, and make town folk flee from mobs. Okay. That's cool. Um, what's next? Cleaning up. Oh wow. Okay, and we're only about two thirds of the way through. And we have we must have a lot of cleanup to do. How's that in the browser? Um, well, so what I'm doing. So DevKitJ Diff, says, "How's that in the browser?" What I'm doing is I've got this little build script, which uh, runs build with a Wasm target, and then runs Wasm bind gen to generate. A uh, two things. It generates the um, a JavaScript file, which runs this Wasm code that just got built, and you can see there's also here an index, which just all it does is it loads it up and then starts the um, the Wasm up. Uh, the JavaScript is generated by the code. Right? It's just a bunch of, and I don't know where, who who generates this, where this is generated from, but it's it's a bunch of um, interface code between the uh, browser and the Wasm, and then what I do is I just hit refresh in my browser. I can also run it over here as a standalone um, executable. Um, Still takes a while to build. But. Oh, okay. I heard that. Um, why? Do, why can I hear that and not my uh, my audio? Uh, and then start up on this other monitor by accident. Okay. So yeah. So if I can run it here with the same exact code, so nothing's different. Um, I didn't have to change anything other than the fact that I was compiling it for native instead of compile it for Wasm. So that's kind of a neat little feature. Oh, and I should also say Driplitskin. Thank you for the follow. That was very kind of you. Looks like that's the Rust book, so I'll probably be learning that. It's not quite the Rust book. It's it's formatted similarly to it. Um, let me throw a link. In. There's a link in the description for the channel. Um, and thank you, DevKJ, for the follow. Much appreciated. Um, the uh, so I just uh, threw a link there in the chat um, for the current chapter we're on. But there's there's um, this is a it's called a roguelike tutorial in Rust. So you're kind of kind of doing three things at once. You're learning Rust at the same time. You're learning how to make a roguelike, and at the same time as that, you're also ha learning how to use the RLTK and uh, the Specs ECS. So it's kind of like um, a multi-purpose thing, and it's kind of neat, and we've been doing it for many, many days. I think this is the 68th day, if I remember correctly. It's up on my YouTube. I'm going to check YouTube now. Um, studio, right? Oh, I don't know if I'm logged in over here. No, I'm not. Okay, I'm not going to log in now online, but there you go. So hopefully, um, yeah, hopefully. It, uh, so I, I did go through the Rust book, so I do kind of did kind of know Rust already. But this is, this is another way to learn Rust, and it also makes something fun to mess around with when you when you're all done. Um, so we're now performing the minimum AI performed by Monster AI and much of the carnivore and herbivore handling in our generic systems, as well as giving townsfolk more intelligence than before. Pedota says it's best to learn on real things. I 100% agree. Also, welcome, Pedota. It's good to see you. Um, if you if you look at Monster AI, there's nothing left that isn't performed already, so we can delete it. All right, so let's delete it, and we'll have to remove it from the mod as well. 
I didn't want to do that. <laughs> Let, let's try this again. <laughs> so there's some AI mod. Um, so we pull it out of here, right? And remove it from run systems. Done. Once deleted, you should cargo run to see if the game's unchanged, and it should be. All right, well, I'm just going to do a cargo build just to make sure it builds. Likewise, the fleeing and approaching of AI of AI animal system RS is now redundant. You can actually delete this system too. Wow. It would be a good idea to make sure all your NPCs have a faction, except for gelatinous cubes who are actually mindless. You can check out the source code here. All right. So the remaining AI. What's the remaining AI? Oh, let, let's do this. Uh, I forgot animal. Animal. So we don't need this anymore. And we can pull it out of the mod. And make sure this builds. And then delete the file. Okay, so remaining AI is bystanders. The remaining distinct AI module is the bystander, and they're doing just one thing, moving randomly. This is actually a behavior that would fit well for deer too, rather than just standing around. It would be nice if town folks showed slightly more intelligence too. Let's think about how our AI now works. Initiative determines if it's an NPC's turn. Status take can, can take that away depending on effects being experienced. Adjacency determines immediate responses to nearby enemies. Vision determines responses to slightly less nearby enemies. And then per AI systems determine what the entity does now. So we could replace per AI systems with a more generic set of move options. These would govern what an NPC does if none of the other systems have caused it to act. So now let's think about how, how, how we'd like townsfolk and others to move. Vendors stay in their shop. Patrons should stay in the shop they are patronizing. Drunk should stumble around at random. Deer should probably also move randomly. It just makes sense. Regular townsfolk should move between buildings, acting like they have a plan. Guards could patrol. We don't have any guards, but that would make sense. Might be nice for other monster types to patrol rather than staying static also. Maybe bandits should roam the forest in search of victims. And hostiles should chase their target beyond visual range, but with some chance of escape. Yeah, so you have to be able to like lock on to a target saying, I know my target went that way. I can't see it anymore, but maybe if I move towards the last known location, I might be able to spot it again. Um, that would be cool to have. Make a movement mode component. All right, so we're going to add two components. Well, let's let's um, commit this. Um, what do we do? We uh, remove redundant system. Okay. Um, so we're going to add a new movement. Oh, no, that's not the component. This is the component, move mode. We just, it just has a movement in it. Okay. Um, and do we have another one of these? I do. Skill. So I'll just copy this here. Pub enum movement static and random and I know it's going to get reformatted that's okay and then down here we'll put in move mode which just has movement okay and then we have to add it to main uh, one sec mode. OK, 
Okay, now we'll open. Oh, we have to put it in save load system too. There. Okay, so this should check, and now we'll open up mob structs and edit to capture a movement mode and no longer provide an AI tag since this will let us do away with them completely. Okay? Um, where are we putting that? We have name... Oh, we're going to replace the AI one? Is that it? Block style, vision range, and then movement. And then quips. Okay. We renamed AI to boom. Got it. This plate breaks a chunk of raw master, open up spawn name mob function, and replace the AI tagged with this. Okay. Um, AI. Is that here? Dota says, for whatever reason, my image was stuck, but the audio was fine. Oh, man. I do see some dropped frames, but you know, I'm currently green, so I'm not sure. Um, hopefully, we didn't lose too much of that. Um, so I think it's this that they're talking about, this mob template movement as ref and it should be random oh no we, we hmm okay I'm gonna comment this out because this does have that monster tag and they didn't say to delete the monster tag yet so let's read this again replace the AI tag selection with this. Okay, it does say to replace the whole thing. Otherwise, static okay but it seems like we're, li we're we've lost a bunch of stuff then right now we need a new system to handle default make a new file default move system and that's going to be this um replace the call to bystander with default move so we're getting rid of we're getting rid of the bystander. Does that mean we're going to also get rid of these tags at some point? Maybe. All right, let's find out. Um, probably moving too fast. Um, we do need to get move mode and movement in here, right? Oh no, we, we've got a star for components, so I think we're okay. Let's see if this checks. Oh, it does. Okay, good. So we do need to add source AI move, default move system. Okay, and then struct alt move AI. Oh yeah, we have to do the um, the type data default data. Let's say move data is okay. So we're gonna write storage. My turn. That's that's how we take away the turn from somebody. It's hard to type and talk at the same time. Read storage with the move mode. 
uh, oops, str a g e um, position right expect map uh, two more write storages of view shed and entity moved we're going to pull out the random number generator um, as a write expect And then we're going to grab all the entities. Like that. Okay, so what are we going to do here? Um, so we're going to loop over, well, let's first we destructure the data. Like that. Um, we have the same turn done thing. Um, so we're going to loop over those for entity that has a position, a mode, view, shed, and a turn. Join, um, turn, done, push, entity, so we can clean it up. And then we're going to match the modes mode. So static's not going to do anything, and the random is going to have this random movement. And I think, let's, let's pull out the bystander AI. I think it's the same code, right? So we can just save a little bit of time by copy-pasting. Match mode mode. Is this and it's going to grab this move roll? We're going to match the move roll. Uh, X is greater than zero, Y is greater than zero. Yeah, all of that's the same if it's not blocked. We have entity moved. We set the blocked, we set the view shed dirty, and that's that, right? So that's all that code. And then, oops. Okay, there's something I'm missing here. It's not lining up properly. What I, I must have missed a brace somewhere. That's that's correct. That's correct. This should be. Oops. This one should be on the random, and it is. This should be on match mode. That's on the join. And that's on run. Did we shift over by one? Oh, we did. Everything shifted by one because of this thing. Okay. So let's change this here. And then shift everything over. Not like that. Like this. There we go. So now everything lines up. Okay, good. Um, we do want to do after the, f uh, after the for loop. That's not the for loop. This is the for loop. Okay, here we're going to remove turn marker for those that are done. Okay, um, I think.
think that's everything, right? So that's that's the whole thing. Open up main RS, find run systems, and replace the call to bystander with the default move. Um, I think we need to add it to the mod, right? that first. Um, that should be an arrow. Good. And then game system. I'm sorry, game state. Bystander should be default move. And here should be default move system. Oh no, just default move AI, like that. Right. And then we're going to replace all references to AI equals in mobs with movement equals. I think they mean colon, but that's okay. Uh, let's see if this checks first. Okay. So AI space colon. That's herbivore. This should be replaced with movement. Choose static for all of them except for patrons, herbivores, and drunks. Okay. So we're going to just replace all of these things here. Uh, and I'll, I'll just I'll just do a global replace for now. And I'm doing this one at a time because the way the commas work in JSON, do you need to? Um, you can't have trailing commas, unfortunately. All right, so there weren't any anyway. Okay, so then we're going to modify which ones patrons. So patron movement is going to be random. And herbivores. Oh, oops. Deer are herbivores. Uh, what other herbivores did we have? Um, the bat. The bat is a herbivore. That's the deer. That's it. So it's just the bat and the deer. Okay. There we go. Random. So that's the herbivores and then drunks. Drunk should be random. Okay. If you cargo run now, you'll see that everyone stands around except for the random ones who wander aimlessly. One last thing for this segment, go ahead and delete the bystander AI system file and all references to it. We don't need it anymore. All right, so that's in mod. We don't need bystander. And then we can um, cargo check. That should be clean. Good. And then we'll say RM, there's AI bystander. Uh, and then build this. And the next up is adding in waypoint based movement. A random versus random waypoint. Okay. Let's see how this looks first. All of the townsfolk should not be moving except for the drunks. That's a peasant. There's a drunk. So let's see how that works. So you can tell who the drunk people are just by whether or not they're moving. This guy was moving, so he's a drunk, but he's a peasant. Peasant, peasant, dock worker, drunk. Okay. That's working. Let's commit this. Um, static and random movement for AI. Okay. 
So we've mentioned that we'd like townsfolk to mill about, but not randomly. Open up components and add a mode to movement. So random waypoint path is an option back u size. Okay. Notice that we're using Rust's feature that enum is really a union in other languages to add in an optional path for random movement. This represents where the AI is trying to go or none if there isn't a current target, either because they just started or they got there. We're hoping to not run an expensive A star search every turn, so we'll store the path and keep following it until it's invalid. So now in raw master, we'll add it to the list of movement modes. AWR 417H, thank you for the follow. And please let me know how you prefer your name to be pronounced. Um, so we're going to go into Raw Master. And we're going to to random. We're going to add random waypoint. It's going to be EB with move mode. With a path of none. Oh, that just barely fits. Um, but it's going to get reformatted anyway, isn't it? Yep. Okay. In a default move system, we can add in actual movement logic. Okay. Yeah, we have to add that here. Okay, so movement. It's a, it says, Hi, what do you think of Rust? Should a newbie learn it as a first systems level language? If you are learning a systems level language um, and you don't have one under your belt already, um, Rust is a good one to learn. Because um, the other option is C or C++ and I, I, C is fine. C++ and I do not get along, so we, we politely avoid one another. Um, and Rust is the first non-C systems programming language that I've actually latched onto or it works with my brain. So if you're me, you should do what I do. That's what I'm saying. <laughs> Sorry, that's not very useful. Waypoint path. Okay, so if we have instead of a, a static or a random, we actually have a waypoint, or we're trying to get a waypoint. And if there is one, then we're going to try to keep following it. And if there isn't one, I guess we're going to generate one. Yeah, with an A-star search. So we only do the A-star search if we haven't gotten a path already. Oh, you're welcome, Asa. Epic blog says C++ and I, or you're, <laughs> you're quoting me, and I hang out at the same parties. We just politely avoid talking to one another. Yeah, I, I stare at different plants than C++ stares at. That's the way we get along. Um, if let some path equals path. We have a target. Let my index map x, y, i, d, x, pond x, pause y. I have a friend who really, really loves C++, and um, I, I do not fault them for that love. If map blocked. So I have nothing against C++, people who use C++. I, it just doesn't work for me. So map blocked IDX equals false. Um, so this is, yeah, so this is, this code, how many times have we written this code now? Um, where we we turn off the false, we set pause x and y, we do an entity move, we get the new index, we set this, and we set the view shed. These lines, I swear, we got to make these a general purpose thing at some point because it's it's uh, map width and then pause y. I'm starting to get the the hang of this. Uh, um, Vim change, change from shift y to, to two lowercase y's for copy full line. Nope, 
did this thing where I can't read what I'm doing. Entity moved, insert entity. Just a bubble says I love C. I I love C too, but uh, you know I've been using it for years and years, so I, I'm used to its quirks at this point. Um, Pedota says for C plus plus you have to be special. Maybe, maybe. I would not argue that I'm special in any way. Uh, unable to insert marker. So you could very well be correct there, Pedota. X, Y, I, D, X. True, you should. 30 is true. And then path, remove, zero. Remove the first set of the path. Okay, so that makes sense. We're going to work our way. Huh. Okay, so we're removing zero, but we step to path one. So we're going to remove that. So that means path the new path zero is going to be where we currently are. But it also means we're never going to get to the last step. Nope, oh, I left out a, um, a one up here because I was rescanning my code. Okay. Otherwise, we will wait a turn to see if a path clears up. If the path never clears up, though, then you're stuck, right? You just get stuck here forever. Um, you should. There should be some sort of a timeout, right? After you've tried like five or six times, you just you know say, okay, you know what? I can't get to where I want to go from here. Let's let's go through this code here and generate a new A star search for my uh, target location. Mode mode equals movement random waypoint path none. All right. So we if if we got to where we're going, then we just we set our waypoint to none, and that means the next time we come through this loop, we're going to come through here. And what is here? Let target X. Oh, we're just going to pick a random location on the map and say, okay, that's where we're going to go. Sure. Yeah, so this is a, a thing where, okay, if we pick a bad spot, then we're going to just get blocked forever here. But, eh, you know, they're, they're NPCs. What do you want? Map. X, Y, I, D, X, target, X, target, Y. Pedota says, I just today relearned how to use custom error and from to get rid of problems when using question mark. Oh, neat. Yeah, I've been playing around with from as well. It's a, it's a, it's pretty powerful. I like it. Uh, map x y i d x pause x pause y. And then again, we have to pass in a mutatable map. I'm not sure why. I'm gonna, I'm gonna take a quick look at this code here and see what they're doing. This is not specifying mutable. So I'm guessing that we don't need that. Maybe this was for an older version of the code. Hmm. And I also want to learn how they got away with not having to specify a lifetime for this. Because it's a din. Oh. Hmm. Yeah, so I clearly still don't understand how lifetimes work. I'm going to try not passing in a mutatable map and see what happens.
Was it a boxed in? No, it was not a boxed in. It was just um, a reference. I don't know. Hopefully you can see my screen. <laughs> Otherwise, I'm, I'm having issues with my... Uh, I, I, there are 1850 frames dropped since the beginning of the stream, so that's not a lot, but it's more than I would want. And I would want zero. Okay. Um, I probably shouldn't stream over Wi-Fi, right? Uh, what am I doing wrong here? Tile walkable. Oh, is this something that needs... Is there another f function? Yeah, I can help him con consider importing this function. All right, so we need tile walkable here. Expected use size found I-32. Okay. I think these are I-32s, so we have to say as I-32 here, I think. Oh dear. Oh dear, oh dear, oh dear. Uh, 76, we can't do this. We can't move this out. Okay, so we're having we're having some um, interesting lifetime issues we, we need to solve here. This iterator yields ampersand references. Mode is an ampersand reference, so the data it refers to cannot be written. Did I miss out on a mute or something? Let's go back to the beginning here. You have mute pause mode, view shed, and my turn. Entities, positions, move mode. Maybe these need to be mutable now. Let's see. Let's see if that's the issue. Epic blog says if it's a parameter, it's okay. If it's just if you need to store the reference, you need a lifetime. Okay. All right. So this is the full error. Help consider borrowing the options content as ref, or consider borrowing here. Really? Well, we can do that. Test that out. That almost works, but path is a reference, so the data it refers to cannot be. Hmm. Can I do this? I don't know if either that's syntactically correct. Wow. Okay, that worked. Um, now, after solving that. Who knows if that's the right way to solve it. I'm just going to take a quick peek here in chapter 57 and see how they did it. We have 57 AI and 57 A spatial. I'm not sure what the difference is. Let's go in here. Source AI, default, and what do they have? Yeah, okay, so that's how they solved it there. All right. Easy enough, and then they have to make it, yeah, and they had to change it to right storage. Okay, and did I just miss that when I was looking at this? Okay, yeah, I, I, I think it's just missing from the um, tutorial. That's fine. We figured it out on our own and then verified that it worked. So if we cargo run now, so we match on a random waypoint and capture the path as a variable. If the path exists, 
Then we step forward. We try to follow it if it's not blocked. If the path doesn't exist, then pick a random location. And if we can walk to it, then we'll add it to our path. That all makes sense. Epic Blog says, happily and surprised, exclaiming, wow, it worked. It's one of the most programmer things ever. Yeah. Well, it means you've just learned something, right? It means you, 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 you took, you, you were struggling against something and you learned something new, which is great. So it worked really means, wow, I just, I now know more than I knew just a second ago. Okay, so what am I looking for? Everything seems to be working exactly the same way, right? And AIs, oh, the AIs should be, oh, we need to change the, um, we need to change some of our, our um, data, right? We have to change some of the data in order to use this. We have to give it a random waypoint. There, yeah, set some spawns in JSON, spawns at JSON to random waypoint. Okay, so who should get random waypoint? Um, right now it's all just static. Uh, large spider, sure, static, gelatinous cube, static. Bandits could be random waypoint. Dock worker, a fisher, a wannabe pirate, sure. Rats are static, mangy wolves. Those are all fine. Town, uh, shady salesman, we'll leave them static. Barkeep will be static. Goblin, kobold, priest, static, yeah. And this is a parishioner. I guess parishioners can have random waypoints. Oh no, we, that's right, we want to have them static. Clothier, alchemist, those are all static because we don't want to leave them. Mom has to stay home. And then the peasant can be a random waypoint. Okay. So let's save that. I'm irregular. Thank you for the follow. Um, let's see. Let's build this and then we'll see if our um, peasants... Right, some of these are peasants, and then they should be walking in some specific direction looking for a place to go. I have to get to that tile over there. It's my ultimate goal in life, is what they're saying. All right, so let's refresh, begin a new game. These patrons, I think I left them as static. So if I just hit space, oh no. I must have made the patrons not static. Oh well. But they should be looking for places to go. Let's see if we can find a... Um, there's a fisher. Uh, he's definitely walking in some direction. He might be heading to the water. That's appropriate. Look at that. Now he found his, his spot to be, and now he's going somewhere else. Nice. I'm just following, following him along here. See where he's heading. And he's heading right to there. And now he's picking a new location. Okay. So that's working. That's neat. So he just picks a sp place to go and he heads that way. You'll see the villagers now act like they have a plan. They move along paths. Because A-Star respects our movement costs, they even automatically prefer paths and roads. It looks, looks much more realistic now. Okay. So let's commit this. Add pathing to the default move system. And now chasing the target. Okay, so this, I guess, what are, um, when things go out of reach or out of view. I have about 20 minutes left, so hopefully we can get this all done. Our other state, oh, let me push this up before I make any other changes. Okay. Um, our other stated goal is that once an AI starts to chase a target, it shouldn't give up just because it lost line of sight. On the other hand, it shouldn't have an omniscient view of the map and perfectly track its target either. It also needs to not be the default action, but should occur before defaults if it is an option. We can accomplish this by creating a new component called chasing. 
Okay. Be nice to break up these this components file. There's so many components now. If I just scroll through all of these, we have a whole bunch. 379 lines worth of components. Break it up into things that yeah, and I guess we don't need bystander and monster anymore. I don't know that we're using those any longer. Okay. Um unfortunately we're storing an entity, so we need some extra boilerplate to make this serialization system happy. Rust. What? Okay, I, I think I just got lost somewhere. Um, so I think what's going to happen is this smooth compile. Um, and I think they just left out what we need to do. So we have to figure that out on our own. So in main, we're going to add um, chasing. Actually, like this. And then in save load, we'll add it there, and then we'll see what's going to blow up when we try to build. What additional boilerplate do we need? Um, so it's saying the trait serialize is not implemented for specs entity. Were there any other places where we added an entity? Hmm, this has it. The difference here is this convert save load thing. So why don't we try doing it that way? Let's see if that fixes it. Yes, okay, so that was the issue. Is that oh and it was right here anyway okay component inverse save load and clone and debug is optional anyway so okay so this i think this is old converse save load must have been updated to handle entities so now we can modify our visible uh, ai system file to add a chasing component whenever it wants to chase after a target there's a lot of small changes changes so i've included the whole file all right, so let's go to visible and see what changed. Um, we do want to add wants to flee. No, it's already there. And chasing. I think that's the only extra thing we're adding here. And then from this, we'll grab bright storage chasing. We'll add a mutt chasing to that, and we need to use that in. Hmm, okay. Where are we using it? We grab this, we grab the reactions, we grab the flea, we for visible tile, we do this. So we either do. Oh, here, here it is. Here it is. I see it. Chasing insert. So after this, we say chasing insert entity. Very detailed debugging there. Okay. And then done is true. And do we change our evaluate code at all? Or is that all the same? So it looks like all we're doing is adding on attack, we're chasing, we're adding a chasing thing. I think that's the only other change. So let's see if this builds. Um, oh, so we must be changing, our, we have reaction zero as I32. I have reaction dot two here. It has no field too. 
So it should be reaction one, unless we're changing reaction somewhere else along the way. Um, let me go to, yeah, that's faction info. This is the reaction. So maybe there's something else I'm missing here. Oh, right here, reactions. There we go. So in our reactions, we're going to insert. Are we going to? Oh, that's what we did. We modified this to include the entity that we're reacting to. Okay. I see it now. And then here we say for other entity and map tile content, let's some faction. Reaction to push, and then we're just going to push. Um, after the crate, comma here, and then star other entity, right? No, nope, that's not it. This should be the faction reaction, right? Oh, there's a comma here. It doesn't belong. All right, I just messed it up. Okay. I think that's it. No, that's not it either. This is the unwrap. That's the faction reaction. This is the comma for the tuple. Then this other entity pushes that. Oh, no comma there. Okay. All right. Yep. Okay, I think I got it now. See if this checks, and it does. Good. That's a great start. When going after an NPC, we'll automatically start chasing them. Now let's make a new system to handle chasing. Oh boy. The system ended up being more complicated than I hoped because the bar checker really didn't want me reaching into position storage twice. All right, so unfortunately, we're pretty much out of time for today's stream. Um, Diablo says, why does the track sound like it's from Zircon? It probably is. Uh, I may have caught the caught you too late. Right now, what's playing is Stilettos by James Flamestar, but I do have Zircon on my playlist. Um, I have Nitronic and Firewall from Zircon. Okay. Um, so this checks, so we're good at this point. So we're going to, um, we're going to call it a stream now and, oh, what, what are we doing? Oh, we're starting, starting the chasing system. Get add source, get commit beginnings of a chase in AI system. And let's push this up. Uh, I found Zircon through Pretzel Rocks. So that's that's how I started liking that music. Um, so what we're doing here, so I, I pushed it. Um, here's the commits for today. Not too bad, not too shabby. Um, let me see who's out there who I can raid. Who's oh Boppy Games? Okay, what's Boppy Games been doing recently? Before he was going through the Rust uh, Rust Cookbook. Um, so we'll go we'll go raid Boppy. I don't I don't know if everybody anybody else is uh, following them for him, but it's he's got he's got a good stream, very entertaining. So. Uh, Diablo says, I discovered Zircon over a decade ago. Oh, really? Wow. And Epic says, Boppy's doing black magic. Oh, perfect. I love black magic. So let us go uh, get some good black magic in. Thanks, everyone, for hanging out with me. And I will check you. I'll check in with you tomorrow. We're, we're going to finish up this chasing code in the AI system and then take it from there. All right. Enjoy the rest of your day. Take care.